Hey everybody. Um, so I uh, I want to work on a warband for a gang, I guess, for uh, Dracula's America. And um, so I ordered some of these. I, I ordered a couple of these kits off of eBay. I'm not eBay. I'm Amazon. Um, these are this is weird miniatures and. Um, this is their role-playing game. So, like, most people know Malifaux, right? So this is set in the Malifaux universe. I didn't even know they made a role-playing game. But, um, most of the time, their kits, like, the starter kits will run you, like, the core boxes and stuff like that will run you, like, $40, and you get, like, maybe five or six figures in a box and then they're um they include like cards and and they're play tested and you know like you get the idea right so these are a lot cheaper um this is just so that you could make your own character for for their role-playing game that's set in the Malifaux universe but like you can give your Wild West figure, a Gatling gun, <laughs> or a samurai sword, or like they can have like a deck of cards in one hand uh, and then be casting a fireball or like have a handgun in one hand and then, so it's like, it's very thematic. It fits in with, uh, with Dracula's America really well, I think. And I think they're just really cool. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of like multi-part uh, multi-pose kits where you can kit bash stuff and, um, plus like Malifaux, I mean, weird, they, they're, they have really, really nice looking, uh, miniatures. They're very, very highly detailed. They also are notoriously hard to put together. So these are not, these are not like the torture device that, that some of their kits are to put together. Um, they, they seem to like to make things needlessly complicated sometimes. So this is more of like, this is way easier, way, this is, yeah, this is not representative of some of the harder Malifaux minis to put together. But, um, so anyways, I'm going to start working on a warband, and then I got one of these, uh, male multi-part kits, and then I got one of the females. And then I think that both boxes ran, they were like $37 each on Amazon. So, and then you get, I think you get 12, 11 or 12 figures. Let's count the torsos. One, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, 13, 13 figures for uh, a $40 sprue. So a little bit more expensive or $37 sprue. So, but still like, $2 a mini or something like that was what it works out to. Um, so, anyways, yeah, I'm going to start putting some stuff together. Okay, so I've got a couple figures together. Really, really nice looking. Tons of detail. Um, worth every penny to me, I think. <laughs> Um, so I'm not going to use their, their little lipped bases because they're like 30 mil. I think they're gigantic. So I'm just going to cut some little pieces of styrene. I've got some like circles of styrene, the, the right size. I made little wood planks out of them. Uh, but these are like 20, 28 mil or yeah, you know, inch bases. So, but really, really nice looking figures. But here's one of my gripes about these kits, right? So it's like, this is, this is just weird, weird miniatures, how they, like, okay, look at the, we've got one leg right here, right? And then we've got another leg here for these, these poses, right? So that's a complete leg. That's fine. Why, why is this guy... Why is, why is this one two legs with no feet? And then the feet are along here. Like, just seems really needlessly complicated. 
like they could have put more like little handguns or things like that in here, more uh, options. They have you have a lot of these kind of closed hand, open hand poses, and not enough like guns and stuff to go around. So just a little gripe. Like I wish, I really wish that they would instead of making things needlessly complicated, just fill in these spaces with like little handguns or something and then put whole legs, whole torsos in the other sections. Like if you're listening, weird, please, please. But uh but these aren't these aren't as bad as some of the kits I've seen. So okay, I'm gonna make some more and make some females too. Alright, so that's enough to get me started. Um I really like them. You know, I bashed together some stuff with some other parts that I had. Um, they have tons and tons of detail. Really, really nice looking. Um, one thing that I did notice, so yeah, they do, they do kind of make my, um, uh, my like North Star, like these are, these are null, null bodies bashed together with the the gunfighter kit, um, like weapons and stuff. So yeah, I mean, Northstar, they typically run a little bit small for, these are 28 millimeter. And then you can see that they're uh, sm short, short for 28 millimeter, right? And then these are tall for 32 millimeter. Um, they are all, they're almost like 35 millimeter, even though they're supposed to be 32 millimeter. In fact, that's like true 35 millimeter. <laughs> um, so, you know, a little bit of scale creep going on. Um, <clears throat> they do make the, uh, the North Star stuff look like potatoes though. I mean, in terms of like detail and stuff. But, um, you know, like North Star, they make all kinds of kits, like stuff for Frostgrave or like Native American, I don't know, like all kinds of stuff. So it would be easy to just take all kinds of parts and bash them together to make all kinds of stuff for Dracula's America. But then Malifaux is very thematic you know it's 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 a very very similar universe in fact like if you like one you probably like the other as far as games go but um it's a big investment for me to um they're they're much more expensive right <laughs> um malifo is another war game you know like a like a complicated game that requires a lot of headspace as far as rules and stuff goes. So there's that. <clears throat> and then I know that, um, like, I can get my friends to play, um, like, Frostgrave. Like, speaking of, so, okay, I've got a, this is a, um, uh, Game of Thrones mini. And, you know, I, I use these for Frostgrave. Again, very true, 32 millimeter. And then I've got um, some Shadows Over Brimstone minis. Very true, 32 millimeter. So if I mix the, um, if I mix the, these guys in with the Shadows Over Brimstone figures, they look fine. If I mix these in with the Shadows Over Brimstone figures, they look fine too. So I prefer true 32 millimeter minis. Like that's what most of my stuff is. But uh, but yeah, I mean these are really cool. But uh, I think that they're very difficult to put together. Okay, so you get you get 12 characters in the box, right? The parts to make um, 12 you know, 12 males and females, but you're also getting exactly 12 arms or 24 arms and 24 legs. And uh, you don't have a lot of options as far as like multiple weapons or, um, 
just different kinds of like heads and stuff. Whereas like with the the, the North Star multi-part sprues, they give you all kinds of options for uh, for heads and weapons and you know all kinds of stuff like that. So I guess uh, pick your poison, and then also you're gonna get twice as many minis in a box of like plastic gunfighters or gnolls um, or cultists or whatever in the same box for the same price, which is like the same size. So there's a lot of empty space in here and these are expensive. But uh, so yeah, pick your poison. Um, I like them, I think they're really cool. But again, they're expensive and they're hard to put together. So that's enough to get me going. I'm going to do some, a little bit of basing and priming, and then I'm gonna start painting. Okay, so I gave everybody a good uh, Xenothal prime with the airbrush, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and let these get bone dry before I, uh, before I touch them with an actual paintbrush. If you ever, if you ever start painting a mini and you've like just finished priming it and you peel up paint, just stop, walk away, let it dry, and then come back to it. All right, everybody's nice and bone dry, ready to go. So got my wet palette set up over here. And then I think I'm gonna do some contrast paints. Um, I've been playing around with the contrast paints a lot. They, uh, <clears throat> I want to be able to like Zenith All Prime minis and then do something that will just put down a glaze, like a, a kind of a transparent layer of paint uh, that picks up all of the highlights and shadows that are already in there from the Zenith All. Um, so, not really sure. Like the, I've been trying different things, and I, uh, I'm, I want to try the Army Painter version of uh, contrast paints, like speed paint. I think is what it's called. I'm just, I'm more of a wet palette guy than a paint pot guy. Like, I even bought one of these because I kept knocking over the stupid Citadel pots. But um, you can use um, Vallejo Model Air. Very, uh, very similarly to um, like contrast paints and then put it on, on a wet palette. So I just wanna put like an initial kind of glaze of uh, color down on top of this, um, of the Zenithal to uh, just keep those lights and darks where they are and then put some color on top of it. So you can see on this guy how he has his deep uh, recessed shadows in there and it's like almost black in some areas like under his coat and I'm actually going to leave a lot of that just like black because um, I want those shadows in there but I want to just kind of put some transparent color on top of that just put like a filter on top of it so yeah, <laughs> that's that's where I'm at. That's what I've been trying to do with the, the contrast paints. And uh, so this is Snakebite Leather. It's one of people's like favorite contrast paint colors. I like it too. Um, yeah, that's doing what I want it to. So I just want to be able to kind of glaze uh, color over the uh, the lights and darks, how I already have them. It's an awkward angle. I 
I don't like painting in sub-assemblies either. Like I'd much rather just glue something up and get it um, put together and then paint it. <laughs> yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so that's still drying, um, but it's not pooling anywhere. It's, I mean, well, <clears throat> it's doing its thing. Like it's supposed to run into the recesses and missed a spot. Um, that's one of the nice things about the contrast paints though, is that if you do miss a spot, you can just come back to it with the same color and then just go over it. Um, but yeah, that's doing its thing. You know, it's kind of running into the cracks and stuff and uh, picking up all those shadows. And that's mostly what I wanted to do is to get all the shadows. And then I'll come in and redo the highlights with, um, with an opaque, um, a, uh, you know, a thick, like a real, a real legit acrylic. So yeah, I, I, I have my kind of like my map about where the um, highlights belong. And I feel like the, um, the colors do get kind of washed or the, the contrast paints, like they're good for picking up like the shadows and stuff on stuff like this, but then you, you need to come back and like redefine the, uh, the highlights, sort of put, put saturated bright colors back in because they get really washed out. Likewise, um, I want to to create highlights in some spots and then have, you know, have my, uh, have my shadows in, in certain spots, <laughs> you know, highlights and shadows. So I can just build those up and maybe do a little bit of two, two brush blending. So two brush blending is where you you have one brush that's loaded up with paint, right? And you go in and put down some color and then you take another brush that's clean and then you kind of like feather it out. Like I've, I've, uh, I've got my highlights at the top up here and then I can kind of push that color around and like soften it out. Some people do it where they stick one brush in their mouth and then, and then they uh, soften the colors with the other brush. I don't do that. Um, there's a lot of weird chemicals in paint, like uh, cadmium is a heavy metal, which uh, is like causes cancer. So, <laughs> not always super good for you. Like Dallas on uh, P3, if you watch P3 videos, you can hear him where he, he talks, he always has one brush in his mouth. And he's like, okay, now we're gonna put on some Jean Stewart pink like does that, like the whole video. It's kind of funny. So just to show you that um, 
uh, model model air game air Vallejo, the the version or that the Vallejo model air and game air you can use it just like uh, contrast paints or um, uh, speed paint you know army paint or speed paint but you can use it on the on the wet palette just show you so it comes out um, uh, much thinner and run in it's it's kind of transparent there's uh stuff that they add to it like surfactants and um, but you can see how it pretty much does the same thing if you're a wet palette person like me you can just glaze on a little bit of color but that's how I like to start when I'm painting is I'll do a zenithal paint job with the airbrush and then get all of my get like a road map of where my lights and darks belong and then uh, go in glaze on like a transparent layer of paint to kind of uh, put color on top of that and then work from that. Like um, the on my channel, the the speed painting videos, like I mean the terrain videos, like far and away, are like the most popular. But then the the speed painting videos, where I do like a whole squad of dudes in like a couple of hours or something like that. That's the they're like the most popular. You know, um, so like the point is to get your dudes up to a high tabletop standard quickly, and uh, it's a great way to do it. And like, even if you're going to come back to it later and try and do, you know, a pro, pro, pro paint job, this is a good way. This is a good jumping off point. A lick and a promise, as my mom would say. You're, uh, you're getting a jumping off point or you're you're <laughs> you're getting a good start and then you're promising to come back to it at some point and finish it so one thing though when um when i'm using metallics i do like to leave them like true metallic metals, I do like to leave them in the pots because you can very, very quickly uh, contaminate every color on your wet palette and turn it into a metallic color. It's very easy to do. And uh, also I want, I want those um, highlights to be kind of bright and saturated. And uh, I um, I like to 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 leave make sure that I leave anything that's like if it's a gun barrel or something like this. I like to make sure that everything that's in the shadow is nice and dark. I don't paint everything metallic. Um, I only use it on the the highlights to um, to make those uh, reflective parts pop out. Because uh, if you look at metal, like in the dark, in the shadows, it's it's like black. You know, it's very, very dark in the shadows and then highly reflective in the light. All right, so, um, yeah, it's, so it's the next day. Um, this is <clears throat> this is one of the things that the wet palette is designed to do is keep your acrylics fresh and uh, ready to use so that you can you know keep a palette for multiple days in fact if you put them in the fridge they will last a really long time and they won't totally dry out um but i've got a few figures done uh <clears throat> But um, just to recap, if you're looking at all of the, the
the, the paints that are down here. Um, so, uh, you can, you know, you can obviously, you can totally use this with, uh, contrast paints, this technique where you're like glazing on color and then going back in and kind of redoing your highlights. These do a nice thin job of picking up the shadows. Some colors are better than others. I personally, I really like Snakebite Leather and like Blood Angels Red. They're great. And then um, with uh, the Wet Palette, if you're a Wet Palette guy. Um, yeah, here we go. Model Air is going to do probably the same, like the exact same thing. It has the, like the surfactants in there. Um, the, and it's, it's a thin, thin runny color. And, uh, yeah, it's going to kind of do the same job if you live in the Vallejo universe, you know, like me, um, or, or like most of the time, if you live in the Vallejo universe, you, uh, bought a condo there and kind of moved in. Um, <clears throat> so the difference between model air and game air, same thing, you know, it's designed to go through the airbrush. It has the surfactants in there that will help it run around. Um, game air is typically brighter, more saturated colors. And then I think it has, maybe has a little bit of varnish in there. It's supposed to be a little bit tougher than model air. And then model air, usually they, they mark themselves more towards like military modeling and stuff. So they have like Afghanistan mud and U.S. Air Force green and Russian rust or whatever as colors. And then working your way up from there, model color is going to be more thick and more opaque. Um, and then finally, game color is the most thick and most opaque of the, uh, the Vallejo colors in my experience. And then, you know, P3, same thing, going to have that heavy body kind of uh, acrylic. And um, it's really, really good for wet blending, doing like opaque highlights and then kind of feathering them out like two brush blending, things like that. Um, and uh, and then AK, third generation acrylics, supposedly you can do it all with them. It's just gonna, you're just gonna need to thin it down if you want to airbrush with it, or you can use it straight onto a wet palette if you want to paint with your brush. I like both, or I like all, I like all of them. So anyways, yeah, I think that's gonna be it, you guys. I do really, really like them. I think they're kind of, um, they're kind of expensive. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be picking up Malifo anytime soon. I might, you know, I like, I like Malifo, but it's, it's kind of a, a big ask for my friends. Whereas something like Dracula's America is, it takes up a lot less headspace for rules. And, um, but they are really, really nice. Really nice figures, even if they are gigantic. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna post some pictures of at least the ones that I have done. And then, uh, yeah, that's gonna be it, you guys. So anyways, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. And that's it. Peace out.